to now adjourn. I call the member for New England. Well, thank you very much, Mr Deputy Speaker. And I was thinking about giving the member for Sydney an extension of time so she'd get to thanking me, but, uh, but that's fine. But I thank her. I thank her for the, for the job. <laughs> the job she's done. Um, and I also um, uh, concur with her remarks about all the things that people have done. Mr Deputy Speaker, um, more and more in my electorate, and might I suggest in so many others, there's a movement that's starting. It started with a few, but it's growing. And it started with people from a sort of disparate group. And uh, now I see that even people such as Dr Bob Brown are part of it. Uh, former Senator Christine Milne are part of it. Uh, I'm part of it. Uh, there's some senior people uh, around the countryside that are part of it. And it's strange that we'd be all drawn together, and it'd be almost, also even more strange if I tell you what it is. This movement against wind towers. People are, are getting sick of them. This is an encroachment, a complete encroachment into people's private lives. Mr Deputy Speaker, do you realise that 270 metres, the, the tip of these blades, are only slightly lower than Centre Point Tower? And we have people, good people, good people who do not feel they have the power to protest. They feel they are removed from the power to do something about these issues, these things, as they call them. And these good people have to look out of their window where they have resided in quiet enjoyment. And I note the uh, member for Isaacs there notes that term very well. In quiet enjoyment, to now have to deal with the prospect of seeing their, their environment turned into an industrial area against their will, without any of their say so. Certainly, uh, the beneficiary of it is where those towers reside, but that's not them. And if someone's to say, say I was go I'm going to put uh, 270 metre statues of bananas as an encouragement for you to eat fruit, even though bananas are a herb, someone say, well, there's something wrong about that. Uh, surely I have some buy-in in this. It has become even more evident after the, the, uh, the New South Wales Liberal Party Minister Matt Keane passed a piece of legislation saying that they would close down four more coal-fired power stations to replace them with renewables. Well, this will undoubtedly be wind towers. And wind towers, that would mean of close to 700,000 hectares. That's in excess of one and a half million acres of further country in New South Wales that will be dedicated to wind turbines, who, to be frank, cannot do the job. They just can't do it. They do not have 24-7 reliability, and just leave it at that. So it doesn't matter whether you're at Ben Lomond, to the community I was speaking to the other day, or at Nundal, or at Kentucky, or at Clarks Creek, or at Crookwell, or at Rolston. The movement is growing. They're just not coordinated yet. But they're getting coordinated, Mr Deputy Speaker. And they're asking to be represented, and they're asking that Australians in the Australian Parliament stand up against a thing that is 100 per cent imported from overseas, 70 per cent owned by foreign entities, and unable to do the job of the power unit it's removing. We have a dilemma in this nation, and this is it. And this is why I'm not a great religious believer in a sort of a metal in a in a sort of carboniferous item being coal. I'm a great believer in power. But what's happening now is we're saying, well, we can't have coal, we can't even mention the word. We can't even say it. We can't have nuclear because of uh, Chernobyl. That's 1954 Soviet technology. If you've driven around a 1954 Soviet car, you know what that's like. You can't have gas because that's fracking. You can't have wind towers because of exactly what I'm dealing with and I have great sympathy for, the complete encroachment on other people's lives. If you have solar, you've got to have backup, which means you've got to dam rivers to bring, put in pump solar, and they don't want that. So the only alternative is we live back in a cave. So I'm telling you to go back to the obvious one, which is highly efficient, low emission, super ultra-critical coal-fired power, because the alternative is the further encroachment into the rights 
of people and the capacity of the economy.